remember sweet Betsy from Pike That crossed the wide prairie with her lover Ike With two yoke of cattle and a large yellow dog A tall Shanghai rooster and a one-spotted hog Singing through la 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 Now they soon reached the desert where Betsy gave out And down in the sand she lay rolling about While Ike in great terror looked on in surprise Saying, Betsy, get up, you'll get sand in your eyes Singing to la la do la la do la la do Sweet Betsy got up in a great deal of pain Declared she'd go back to Pike County again Then I heaved a sigh and they fondly embraced She traveled along with his arm round her waist Now the wagon tipped over with a terrible crash And out on the prairie rolled all sorts of trash A few little baby clothes done up with hair Looked rather suspicious though it was all on the square in 1849, um, you know, prior to the gold rush, at the beginning of the gold rush, um, the uh, estimated native population of California was 150,000 people, and there were 15,000 non-Indians living in what's now California. So 10% of the population was non-local, and um, you know that shifted like very, very dramatically and very, very quickly as people flooded in. And there's this sort of like um, mental picture that people have of, um, you know, essentially white folks moving in from the eastern seaboard. Um, but the, uh, the the gold rush was sort of a, a peri-Pacific phenomenon. Um, people found out about it first in Hawaii. And so the first sort of gold rush people to come in were Hawaiians. Um, you know, some of them were, you know, Euro-Americans and English people living in the Kingdom of Hawaii at the time. But a lot of them were, you know, native Hawaiians who came over to, you know, dig and dig for gold. This area here is um, where the Southern Maidu lived or the Nisanan people and um, the, uh, you know, the story of John Sutter sends out James Marshall to build a mill and James Marshall goes and discovers gold and, um, but you know, the reality of the situation was he probably encountered Nisanan people who were already familiar with the fact that there were you know gold rocks in the river and nobody really thought much of it other than you know they knew they could trade these things um with the spanish for you know food or whatever and they were you know collecting gold and you know selling it as needed and uh you know feeding the community so you had initially um gold was a, a native mining practice um, and then it sort of quickly got taken over by you know other people as they moved in here okay so in 1849 you have 150,000 native people 15,000 non-native people um, you know by 1850 you have um, you know 3,000 English, 1,000 French, 2,000 German, 3,000 Irish, 6,000 Mexicans flooding into California. By 1860, you have 34,000 Chinese, 12,000 English, um, 33,000 Irish. By 1870, 48,000 Chinese and 54,000 Irish. Um, so now you've got, you know, people from, you know, just China, Ireland, and um, Germany um, constituting more than the native population of California. So you have this sort of massive demographic sort of shift, this swapping that's happening. And um, when you introduce, uh, you know, when you double the population of a place, you have to feed those people. And um, so food becomes an issue and a source of conflict. And then you have these sort of, you know, quote unquote, Indian wars that get kicked up in Northern California in the 1850s, um, which are essentially about, you know, food and population pressure. Um, natives are poaching cattle because um, miners are screwing up water sources, causing droughts, um, driving out um, food resources, um, driving people off of their property, um, and um, 
you know, and, and then you, you have these sort of wholesale, um, you know, exterminations of people that go down. There were 251 tribes in California prior to the gold rush. After the, a few years of the gold rush, there were only like 51 tribes. Most of the tribes were just annihilated. I mean, what people would do is they would take whole groups of people, men, women, children, babies, and just wipe them out. All right, so you had this sort of growing settler population that was, um, you know, putting all kinds of pressure on people. It's causing actual out-and-out -out conflict. And, um, and then, you know, they had this um, 1872 um, Mining Act um, that gave miners all kinds of leeway um, in terms of how they were going to use their land. And um, so the sort of um, environmental depredations became really really intense. Um, then you have, you know, introductions like hydraulic mining, placer mining, um, where people are using high pressure hoses, diverting rivers and streams to do this, and then just blasting things out, sending debris everywhere. You have dredge mining. Um, when we're sitting in the midst of the tailings of a dredge mine, um, a massive dredge mine that completely changed the entire landscape in the American River Valley that you can see it from space. And so these, uh, these hydraulic methods were causing all this debris to flow into the rivers and it was affecting people downstream. And um, so you had a sort of series of laws were passed in the state. Um, one was called the Sawyer Decision. Um, it was in uh, 1884. Um, the Anti-Debris Association um, effectively sued to get um, people to stop hydraulic mining. And so it suddenly became really hard to get permits to do that in the 1880s. And so the, uh, the effects of, of large-scale mining in the California landscape is, you know, ongoing. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's less wet, there's less tree cover, um, there are places in the Sierras that will, you know, that are effectively deserts now that were forests before and they'll never be the same again. There's places like this that are, you know, covered in tailings, you know, square miles of tailings. And there are, you know, some marks left on the landscape that are quite deliberate, like the, um, you know, the Blythe and Taglios. Um, and, you know, rock art sites and things like that, um, that, you know, have meaning and these places, you know, carry meaning as well, um, because they speak to the, um, the, the struggles of the people on the lowest end of the totem pole. <laughs> The last piece of bacon one morning was fried. Poor Ike got discouraged and Betsy got mad. The dog wagged his tail and looked the one that this sad. Saying goodbye, Pike County, farewell for a while. We'll come back again when we've panned out our pile. No one more. This area is a historic mining camp dating from the 1880s and was in use until as late as the uh, as 1960. Um, there are old claims here, um, abandoned mine shafts, and one of the things you can't really see in this image is the amount of lumber necessary. Tons of lumber was necessary to build mine shafts, brace them, that the carpentry involved didn't change from the 19th century through the 20th century, even as other mining technologies changed. So the uh, mines had to be held up with wooden trusses and the placer mining required uh, wooden sluices. Um, so the extraction industries in California really changed the landscape radically after 1850. So this affects the hydrology of the landscape. It affects the forests that are cut down in order to build this kind of infrastructure. And, you know, additionally, there is the infrastructure associated with um, the people that support the mining industries themselves. Um, all of these minerals, um, metal, um, are and and lumber are flowing into metropolises on the west coast founded by um, the Spanish initially and truly expanded by the Americans and um, so mining for metals 
out here in the hinterland um, helped sort of fuel the um, booming economy of places like San Francisco. And in addition to that, you had, you know, the need for these kinds of metals and timber for building railroads. And when the railroads were built into California, it really, really increased the number of people that were flowing into the place and allowed, kind of created the infrastructure that allowed the population boom that we see today, the California of freeways and major cities. Now a miner said, Betsy, will you dance with me? I will that old horse if you don't make too free. But don't dance me hard, do you want to know why? Don't go, I'm chock full of strong alkali. The long night and sweet Betsy got married, of course. But I didn't jealous, obtained a divorce And Betsy, well satisfied, said with a shout Goodbye, you big lummox, I'm glad you backed out 